Good morning, friends. I'm happy to announce that we have broken the loop. I think like around this time last year, maybe it was the year before last. I feel like time, what is time right now? There was like this audio going around and it was like, I don't know. If you want to, if you want to do, 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 do you, we must break the loop or something like that. Something like that. I can't, I can't remember it, but even though I can't remember it, I remember kind of what the gist was <laughs> and I can hear it running in my head, but not fully. And it's like, if you want to, da, 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 you have to break the, da, da, da. I don't know. Basically just saying like, if you want to break the cycle, you have to like, you know, do something different. You have to like, I, don't, I can't think of it. So you know what it is. I'm happy to announce that we broke the loop of sleeping late and waking up later. And we're back on our waking up early train and we have finished journaling. So it's something interesting about journaling. Normally your girl is rocking with the A, the A5 and it's almost like, where are we at? Where are we at? No, we're rocking with the A4 and we're waiting for our next A4 to come. In the meantime, we're rocking with the A5 and it's so much less real estate. Like I got to the end of my third morning page and I was like, but there's still so many more thoughts in my brain. It's wild because six months ago, if you'd have given me that A4 journal and told me that that's what we're writing in, I'd have been like, that's so much to write. What are you talking about? Three pages every single morning. But now like this feels like, this feels almost like one and a half, maybe like one page. This feels like one page of my normal three pages. So. I'm excited to get back to my, my big journal, but it was so nice writing in this. Like it felt so good to write in something that I created that is just kind of like beautiful and crisp and clean. It's like, wow, that just came out of my brain and it's right here in front of me on the page. So we got our journaling done. We also got our reading done. It's so funny because even as I'm telling you this right now, I feel myself wanting to go back to reading before bed, but that's not, it's not, I, I can't say it's not ideal because maybe it's ideal for me if I enjoy it. <laughs> we have to revisit that. But uh, we are still talking about impermanence. Um, we're learning specifically about the three Dharma seals in uh, the part of Buddhist teaching. And I love this excerpt because it gives us an exercise or a practice when it comes to mindful living. It says, if we practice the art of mindful living, when things change, we won't have any regrets. We can smile because we have done our best to enjoy every moment of our life and make others happy. When you get into an argument with someone you love, please close your eyes and visualize yourselves 300 years from now. When you open your eyes, you will only want to take each other into your arms and acknowledge how precious each of you is. The teaching of impermanence helps us appreciate fully what is there without attachment or forgetfulness. And I thought this was really beautiful because it mentions without attachment or forgetfulness and like how easy is it for us to forget things in the moment, things that are important to us in a moment of trying to prove that we're right or trying to prove that we're justified or trying to prove how this person wronged us but how many of our problems would dissipate if you imagined yourself in 300 years. And that's not to say devolve into nihilism, because I feel like that's the next easiest thing is to say, well, you know, nothing matters, but I don't think that that's the way to go about it because it's not that nothing matters. It's just that nothing lasts forever. So treat it as such and this vice versa even the terrible things like terrible political regimes and you know dictators like nothing lasts forever nothing lasts forever that's not to say you know appreciate the dictatorship for what it is right now no 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 but find comfort in 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 permanence in, in that particular in those particular situations so making peace with impermanence and then also using it um, as a tool to navigate times of difficulty as well. If you live your life in a way that, okay, I'm healthy, my body is moving and you're taking care of your body, you, you can appreciate it in those moments for what it is. If you know you were to wake up with a toothache tomorrow, now you're in a state where your body's not operating 100%, but you know what it felt like. But you can also find solace in knowing that this toothache has an element of impermanence to it. There's things that you have to do 
to lead to that, but you can, I feel like harness or hold on to your level of comfort or find comfort in the fact that it's not going to last forever. Yes, this sucks right now. I'm in pain, but I have a dentist appointment scheduled next week or, you know, things like that. I think being able to pay attention real time to what is happening instead of getting swept away is the way. When I think about old dystopian novels like Brave New World uh, by Aldous Huxley, one of the things that Huxley was most worried about was the idea that we would have all of the information, but we'd be so inundated with noise that we wouldn't even care to seek out the truth or we wouldn't even be able to see it anymore. And I think being able to cut through the wavering and confusion to focus on the things that are most important is one of the ways that we can combat all of the noise that is currently around us. And I think probably more than has ever, ever been. I don't, I don't think that we've ever been in a position that we're in right now where we're receiving so much information on a daily basis that even if you do come across something that's useful, chances are you're being blasted with something else immediately after that makes you forget exactly, you know, what that life changing thing was that you found. But if you focus on like four tenets, like impermanence, I think, I think that is the way. So we're going to chew on this throughout the day. And, uh, take our progress picture. Have we narrowed down the morning routine? I think that we have friends. I think that we have, we're going to pop in our progress picture already started our water for the day. And then, uh, we're going to go to the gym and we're going to make this day happen onward. So I'm kind of excited because this gym is never empty. There's always people in here and, um, this might be the move coming at this time. We're gonna do legs and abs today. We've been putting in a lot of like arm work and uh, we're just gonna focus on um, going to failure on everything pretty much. It's a failure day. We're gonna do some legs and then we're gonna switch over to some GHDs. Oof. I just snorted. Also, we also always make sure to have proper gym etiquette. Leave places better than we found them. Okay, friends, so we are getting our second workout of the day in and I have been mulling over impermanence all day and I took a look at my Instagram feed and I scrolled all the way to the bottom and I just kind of worked my way up and it was so interesting for me to see like the pure joy on my face during that time in my life. And you know, like if I could put myself back into that time and I could think about like, all of the insecurity that I had and like all of the stress. There's this concept in the Buddhism book that is talking about relative joy right now. And so you have joy and then you have relative joy. And when I look at those videos of myself and I'm just like learning how to skate and just sharing with the world. And there's almost like a little bit of sadness as you realize you'll never have that level of joy again. What I had at that time was straight up, unencumbered, pure 
joy. And it's, uh, it's like, it's wild when you realize that like, you'll have different types of joy, right? You'll have different types of joy, but you'll never have that specific type of joy again. And, uh, I'm grateful that I gave even, even throughout the anxiety and stress or the perceived stress that I thought that I was having, I'm grateful that I gave it its due because like, I'll never experience that level of joy again. It'll be different joy. I'll experience joy again in the future and in the present, finding joy in the day-to-day -day things, but it will never be that unencumbered by life. You know, life punches you. There's a point in time where life breaks your heart. And, um, I realized that those pictures, those videos that I was looking at was from a time before, uh, life broke my heart. And, uh, so it's just, it's kind of like a beautiful testament of like, wow, we really have to pay attention in the here and in the now, lest uh, something beautiful pass you by. You don't even realize it. And you look back and you go, damn, I wish I would have known. Well, I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now, okay? <laughs> if you don't know, now you know. Pay attention. Pay attention. Okay, friends, that's it. We did it. It's a wrap. I believe this is day 30, day 30. Wow. This is day 30. Day 30 was a success. Skin is clearing up. I also had a surprise hair wash. So normally it takes like a really long time to wash my hair. And I've been putting it off because I've been waiting for this unbrush to come. And I wanted to like see if it was really about the hype. And part of me is like, torn okay because i'm extraordinarily grateful that i have it it's fantastic but then i'm also really mad because it's like man we could have had this sooner if everybody just would have like acknowledged that like black people and black hair existed <laughs> like <laughs> it's like we waste so much time but it's okay it's all right i think that's like the, my biggest beef is like it wastes so much time but it's okay. We're going to take a deep breath. And I feel like I have a time machine with this brush and that sounds dramatic, but I'm being so serious. Like, I feel like I've gained time from my life back, which is incredible. Normally it takes a long time when I was able to like wash, detangle, wash, condition, detangle, and twist my hair in like an hour and a half, which is like unheard of, unheard of. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and give today a solid nine point, dare I say it? 9.7. A surprise wash day is unheard of. So automatically gives us like two points off bat, right? The day was already completed, which means it was probably pretty good overall. And we were going to be sitting pretty around seven, but a surprise wash day and twist That's a 9.7 type of day, I think. For me, it's a pretty good day. We're hydrated, our hair is twisted, the heat feels good. We're doing the thing, okay? We're doing the thing. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all that, that I've got for you. Tomorrow's a skate day and I'm really excited because I've been adding y'all's songs to my playlist. So thank you for those recommendations. And I'm looping in some new music, you know, and I'm starting to get like a vibe again. And I'm excited to skate to it. I'm excited to just like let my body flow. I think later on this year, I'm going to have a goal to kind of advance my skating skills. I've been very focused on like getting as many beginner people skating. And now I've kind of like, all right, cool. We got a lot of people roller skating. Just focus on leveling up my own skill set. And... Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. That's that'll be our next quarter goal is our level up the skill set. But today life is good and I will see you in the next one.